my first question would be, how did you actually start to do uh, investigative uh, journalism? Oh, see, that's almost a trick question because I don't differentiate between investigative journalism and just in, in, in good journalism or reporting. It's a, it's a matter of asking questions that people don't want you to ask and trying to find out things that they're trying to hide. And um, I, I think I made that switch from feature writing about 20 years ago um, when I began to look into uh, Indian gambling and uh, environmental issues in, in, in Michigan. And um, uh, it, it, then it became a matter of picking up the tools to find things people don't want you to find and, and, and you know, adding to, to that skill set. But, um, but any kind of reporting that asks questions like that, I think, is investigative journalism. Um, we also have a question from um, Steve Katz, from uh, an editor of uh, Mother Jones, who said, It would be interesting to hear her opinion on why the U.S. business press failed so badly in covering the events leading up to the collapse of the housing market in 2008 and the role Absolutely. that the banking industry played in that collapse. Ab Absolutely. Um, I saw a lot of parallels with the, the uh, housing uh, industry and the subprime mortgage crisis with the insurance industry at the same time. They're actually two facets of the same industry, which is um, a, a securitization of risk and and packaging and reselling risk. Um, the risk of homeowners uh, not paying their mortgages or the risk of a hurricane of taking out communities and and they're bought and sold by the same hedge funds and the same bank managers and in both cases the I found the, the mainstream press the financial press even the specialty trades press were turning a blind eye to the larger problem I think there's a willingness to especially in financial matters and more complicated areas of reporting to accept what experts tell you and not do your own independent fact-checking and um, uh, willingness of reporters to allow themselves to be told that they aren't smart enough to figure it out on their own when in fact it's not rocket science even if it were rocket science reporters have the tools these days to to peel that apart and, and, and get to the root of what, what's really happening. How do you think uh, social media has changed the way journalism actually works? Um, it has I don't use social media the way uh, like Facebook and Twitter um, to a great extent in my own work in part because I don't want to tell people what I'm doing until I'm ready to release it. Okay. Um, if I were doing a daily beat I would be tweeting and, and developing a, a following all the time because it's so instantaneous it lets you get access to people. But in, in this last project we used um, the web pages and we made our data available to viewers online and they could type in information and get customized information back to them that let them essentially write their own narrative their own sto story in addition to the ones that we wrote and that's a, a, a immensely I think powerful new tool you it it's a different way to tell a story and it, and it lets someone um, see how it affects their own life uh, which always gives you much greater impact. I use Twitter and Facebook as a rep as a way to gather information. I, I do have to say yes, yes. I I check out. I mean, it's a way to background sources very quickly, as as well as to check out. I put together social networks to see who is talking to who, and figure out where someone is within a larger web of people, and that sometimes helps me get to the center of the web quicker. So uh, it has value. It can be very misleading, though, too. I mean, I was covering an event. Someone was tweeting about the event as though they were there, and it turns out they were not. Um, it, you know, it, it was fictitious, and, um, and that's a danger. So you have to take it with a, a grain of salt. And I'm sure that, that its propaganda um, abilities have, you know, um, will be seen too for, you know, to be used by people trying to send false messages.
What is journalism for you? <laughs> for me, it's air and water. I mean, it's it's. I I don't know that the question was meant that way, <laughs> but but journalism is fundamental to me. It it's um part of the fabric of a community. In in uh, I've mostly worked at small organizations and. Um, served local readers, even when I've done stories that involve traveling across the world. Um, the focus has always been on the change on people's lives. And so my job as a reporter has always given me a very intimate connection with people in my community so that I feel very much part of the fabric of, of uh, people's lives in the place that I live. What is currently your media diet? My media diet. Yes. That's voracious. <laughs> Good. I, um, I no longer get a paper newspaper delivered to my door, uh, but I read uh, the Los Angeles Times, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times on an almost daily basis, as well as my own paper, the Sarasota Herald Tribune. And, um, and then sporadically, I... Um, I have several newspapers that I keep a watch on, uh, the, and wire services, uh, Bloomberg News especially, because I have a deep interest in economic uh, affairs and how I, th I think, even though economics are um, very often dry, the, the power that they have over people's lives is so great, as you're seeing now in Italy with all the hardship, that, um, that I feel the duty to try to understand what's going on in that world so I can watch for the impact in, in my world and, and in people around me. And uh, I don't watch television news um, simply because probably of, of my hours of, of my work schedule, um, but listen then to radio when I'm in the car and, and uh, I have news alerts. I have, I have um, uh, blogs that I follow and, and uh, I, I guess all day long there's that flow of news coming in.